Hello, friends. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. I'm your host, Heidi Ganahl, a wife, mom of four, CU Regent, and the founder of Camp Bow Wow and The She Factor. With a passion for keeping the spirit of our state alive and well, I started this podcast to bring the people of Colorado together to celebrate the amazing state we call home. Come along on this journey with me as I travel across our old country roads in my vintage RV, interviewing folks that embody the true spirit of the Rocky Mountains. From the Front Range to the Mile High City to the Wild West of Southern Colorado, we'll celebrate the history, beauty, and Coloradans that make this place the colorful state it is. Each week, you'll meet people trailblazing the way for an even more colorful future for us all, making a huge difference along the way. Are you ready for a Rocky Mountain ride? Let's do this, Colorado. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Heidi's Colorful Colorado. Very honored today to have Kelly with MindSpark, the CEO of MindSpark, which is an amazing organization, one of the leaders in education in Colorado, and very, very excited to have this conversation, Kelly, and hear what's up, especially after everything we've been through in the last 18 months in the education space. So welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Appreciate it. Kelly, I want to start by uh, hearing a bit about your story. I read a lot about your story, but tell us about your journey, because it didn't start out with the intention to be in education, right? It did not. No, I've always had this passion for math and science, and so always forever thought I would become a scientist or engineer, and that's what I actively pursued, uh, and actually just sort of fell into education. Um, I was helping out at a summer camp for girls um, through CU Boulder a long time ago when STEM wasn't even really a thing yet. And I just really loved working with them and showing them how exciting math and science could be and getting them to explore um, some different ideas and concepts and thought, you know, maybe I'll just get my education license just to kind of fall back on if this engineering thing doesn't work out. Um, And I spent several years in the field working in engineering and just realized that I could make a bigger impact if I went into education and so found my way um, into that and, and fell in love and have been in education now for almost 23 years. So I love it. And you're actually a double buff, right? You went undergrad and graduate degree. I am. Yes, I am. I am. I am. So yes. Very proud of that. Um, but yeah, I I mean, it's education is foundational, right, to everything that we do. And so um, by kind of leaving my engineering background and heading into education, I also came from industry. I came from business. So I never sort of knew any different than to intersect the two. And at that time, especially, it was very, they one didn't know what to do with the other. <laughs> yeah. And so I sort of instantly saw there was a need for sort of this translation between um, industry and education. And that's where I kind of found my niche and my passion. You know, that's something I I think a lot about as a regent at University of Colorado, um, bringing industry and education and community together. And I think MindSpark does a really good job of that. Tell me a little bit about the organization and what you're focused on right now. Yeah. So MindSpark's been around for about five years. And so we're a little bit of a new organization. We um, say all the time that we have a nonprofit heart and mission, but that we have a startup um, spirit and integrity. So we constantly are iterating and coming up and responding uh, to the need in front of us and to the future. Uh, We are a global nonprofit. So we work with schools and communities um, across the world. And of course, Colorado is our home and our own backyard. So we love to serve our schools and communities here. And we work through um, different areas of expertise, I would say. But the cool thing about us is that we're really like a consultancy shop. So any school, any community can come to us and say, hey, here's what we're working on. Here's our need. Here's our problem of practice. And we will custom build alongside them um, a way to get them to move forward and kind of work toward whatever the goal is that they want to obtain. Um, and so that's what I really love is that we do a lot of different projects and get to work with so many different communities. But our passion is STEM education and definitely uh, work really hard in the computer science realm. We also have a sports and coaching vertical that uh, is super, everything we do for educators, we do for uh, youth sports as well, which is awesome. Um, And then we also, we really love to work across leadership and these, what we consider entrepreneurship models. And so again, working with people, it's not about stuff for us. So 
you know, I always say to people, get rid of the noise, like stop buying, going around buying things. Let's just stop the clock a little bit and invest in your people and in your talent, because they're the ones that are going to get you the, you know, the furthest and the fastest. And so that's what we really do is we work at the heart of kind of the culture of an organization and their organizational development. Yeah. One of the things I remember is that you had some really neat um, kind of lab experiments for teachers. Are you guys still doing that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have these really robust uh, design thinking sessions, but they're like fast and furious. And so you jump, you get your hands dirty. We believe that disruption is good. Um, and so we've actually built our own disruption cycle that we take all of our clients through. And so some of that is just this way that educators can come in and just experiment and explore and fail fast and fail forward and figure it out, um, but also be networked together and know that they're not alone. Um, and have industry there to say, hey, have you thought about this? Let's try a different model here um, and kind of be alongside a mentorship. And it's it's awesome. So many brilliant ideas have come forward out of that work. Yeah, it's a, I, I really am impressed with, the, I mean, the teachers in our state are amazing and they are innovators. Yeah. They, they're constantly pushing the limits. I have two nine-year-old twins or a set of nine-year-old twins that are going into fourth grade. And then I have um, a, a one that's going into sixth grade. Then I have a 25 year old who went through the public school system and graduated from college at University of Oregon. But um, one of the things I've noticed at the different schools we've been involved with is that the teachers are really like entrepreneurs in the classroom. Mm-hmm. They're trying to think of different ways to reach as many children and help them learn because they do learn differently, right? And I just, um, I, I was so impressed with teachers and how they gutted it out during COVID. How did COVID change things at MindSpark and how you guys operate? Yeah, I mean, I think our story is probably similar to others. You know, overnight within six hours, we looked at each other and said, we do things really, really well in person, no longer possible. So how are we taking everything we do virtually? Um, and it, within six hours, we built an online kind of toolkit and all of our offerings virtually. And we worked with over uh, 2,000 teachers in a matter of about 36 hours. So there was not only the need, um, but we went from by being in about five countries previously operationally to 68. Uh, oh my last. gosh. So huge need for support, again, for being networked, for being connected, for just everything from, I don't even know what the Zoom thing is and need help. <laughs> I'm ready to go, but I need help with this full engagement by my students. I need to think of creative ways to get the job done. And then we worked with communities that needed just access, you know, just needed to be able to figure it out um, at the most basic level. So it was a huge gamut. And uh, we were really, really, I was really, really proud of my team, but also just uh, it forever changed us. Now we'll be a hybrid. We know that we can do it both in person. And we also know that we can help and work with people virtually and um, have and have great reach. So it, it has forever left its mark for sure in a positive way. Yeah, it seems like it's improved access to bigger communities. That's what it's done mm-hmm. for us at She Factor, my company I have with my daughter. We started as a live events company right before COVID and then had to switch. Uh, not in six hours. We were not that fast. <laughs> um, but over the next couple of months, we switched everything to digital. But it was a blessing in a way because mm-hmm. we got to reach a lot more young women and Yep. all over the world, not just in Colorado or in our chapter cities. So I, ch- I think it feels like you're the same, you have the same attitude that, you know, you take from COVID the good, mm-hmm. hopefully leave the bad behind, but I think it has really sharpened our pencil in a lot of ways, especially in the education space. Mm-hmm. Um, Kelly, one thing I was reading about this morning, um, not related to us doing the podcast, but just in my general reading about education was the number of families that switched to homeschooling or some hybrid model of homeschooling or micro schools. Can you talk a little bit about if MindSpark engages there or what you're seeing on that front? Now, are parents putting their kids back in the classroom or are they sticking with homeschooling and micro schools now? Yeah, I think there has been a big shift. And I think the reason is, isn't that public schools are bad or doing something wrong or charters or private schools aren't meeting the need. I think it's really about this responsiveness and it's been such a huge shift, right? And everything it's taken, it COVID impacted every aspect of our life. And I think um, that parents quickly saw one that perhaps maybe homeschooling was, would be a better option for their child just because of the smaller environment and the more responsiveness that if their student needed that. Uh, micro schools are actually a trend that is pretty exciting. So it's this idea of, you know, building a, a small but mighty type of schooling environment, which educators are empowered 
to run the school and make the decisions um, based on what their community needs are. And so it's also a very responsive model to communities. And so I think, again, um, public schools, charter schools, private schools, they, they need to do a little bit more of that, right? They need to engage a little bit more in becoming slightly more responsive and really looking into ways that they could be a little bit more innovative and entrepreneurial. And we've seen amazing models of that in the public school space, especially during and after COVID. So we're definitely getting there. Um, but I think it changed everyone's perspective on what it means to teach and learn. And so I think, you know, it will eventually probably balance itself back out. But I think right now it's like options and they like choice. And to be honest, having choice in the education market isn't necessarily a bad thing. It pushes us all to be a little bit better and think about what we do and what we've done for so long a little bit differently. And that's not a bad thing um, for sure. But I think that having um, all types of schools and having all types of learning models is probably actually what's most important. Yeah, I agree with you. I think about my four children and how differently each of them learn and what different personalities mm -hmm. they have. And I think it's a bit naive of us to think that every child is going to learn the same way and we can put Don't. 30 kids in every classroom and expect the same results. Um, so I'm excited to see these things pop up. I actually had a friend who, um, right in the heart of COVID, they hired a teacher uh, on their own. They had kids of all ages and the teacher um, created a classroom for the 10 kids. It was almost like the old school um, schoolhouse, out in the middle, <laughs> you know, little house on the prairie. Yes. And you had the 10 year old, the four year old, the 17 year old, and they all worked together. And it was a really cool thing to see. And it, and it was a great experience for all of them for the most mm -hmm. part. Getting organized was not, but um, <laughs> yeah. organizations like MindSpark helped them, you know, kind of think about outside of the box and figure out what tools and resources were out mm -hmm. there for them. Um, tell us a little bit kind of about what's next for MindSpark. What's the biggest thing you guys are working on right now? Yeah, so I actually have some really exciting news that I haven't shared uh, yet. The press release will go out in, a, in about a week. So I'm excited to share it with you. I actually asked my team, I said, is this okay? And they said, yes, yes. <laughs> Tell Heidi, she'll love this. So um, we are putting a very strong kind of stake in the ground about what it means to be, to disrupt the educational landscape. And so um, we have built the first of its kind disruption certification in the country so we actually kind of like think about B Corp for education. So schools, districts, educators um, sign up and they go through a series of, again, like deep assessments and these really rich professional experiences with us. Uh, we have really robust industry partners involved and they actually get certified um, with credentials in being disruptive in being innovative and entrepreneurial and creative and putting a value premium um, on a little bit different set of values for education than we normally do. You know, we normally say, how good are you at teaching math and literacy and how well can you lesson plan and how well can you do X, Y, or Z? And this is different. This is saying, how well do you think and act and adjust like an entrepreneur? How creative can you be? And kind of to your point, how responsive can you be and adjust to what's happening in the world? And how close can you get students to understand the world of industry and work and create these viable career pathways for your students? Um, and it's a big shift because most educators grew up in one industry, which is education. Um, so this is a really big chance for them to see exactly what it's going to take um, to change what it means to teach and learn in the future and, and now. Um, and so we're really excited. And it's, it's actually saying you've done it. You're certified in this. You've, you have these things. And there's five dimensions that we'll work across. Um, and we have really great partners across the five dimensions. So I'm really excited about it. It's a huge step for us. Um, but yeah, so it's a big, it's a big deal. That's very exciting. Boy, and is that right up my alley? I, as an entrepreneur, I think, um, there are so many, um, innovative, like people wanting to disrupt the status quo and do yes. things different and innovate and really figure out how to meet kids where they are and, and meet their needs. And I am super excited to hear about this. I also love the idea of more certifications and digital badging and, um, yeah. you know, certificates, I think that's really the wave of the future, whether it's on LinkedIn or, you know, with different training platforms or even companies doing that. Yeah. So I'm very excited to hear that. I can't wait to, to learn more about it. How do folks learn more about MindSpark and this new program if they're a teacher and want to get certified as a disruptor? Yeah, our website's the best way and it's easy. It's just mindspark.org. So we have everything there they could want and learn about us and um, would just love for them to visit the website. 
That's perfect. We'll put the link. Um, Kelly, I want to shift gears a little bit. And I want you to tell me what, why do you love living in Colorado? What is it about the people or the place um, that makes you excited about living here? Yeah, I am. I'm actually a native. So I was born and raised here and I am a small town girl. So grew up in rural Colorado. Um, I would definitely, I, I think most people, of course, love the mountains and our beautiful spaces, but I really love the people. I mean, I've experienced firsthand, you know, what it means when ranchers separated by miles and miles come together to support each other's um, ranches and farms and help out. I've experienced living in Denver and seeing neighbors and communities come together when there's a crisis or a need. And so I think the people here are incredibly special and there's something about us. I think there's sort of this grit mixed with, you know, this really solid willingness to also see what's ahead of us and, and act and receive. And I love that. That's so well said. I think that people, um, I think that people in Colorado have a very can do big attitude, like go big, go big or go home. <laughs> I don't know where they go. home. Yes. What's small? <laughs> Um, so I grew up near Durango, but I actually grew up uh, on a ranch about 16 miles outside of Durango. So oh, nice. to Durango. yeah, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> One of my favorite places in Colorado. Every time I drive by, I'm like, someday I want to have a rancher. It's Ridgeway, Colorado. Oh, uh, yes. My favorite. Yes. So beautiful down there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So Kelly, one of the things I love to ask people on the podcast is what's the most Colorado thing you've ever done? And as a native, a small town girl who lives in the big city now, sure there's a wide variety, but tell us what, what's one that comes to mind. I think I'm sure my teenagers would be horrified if that I'm sharing this, but I think the one thing I love to do the most is um, I love to go swimming in our icy mountain lakes. Like it's kind of like my version of the polar bear club, I think. And it's my favorite thing to do. And then I'm a total rock hound and collect rocks. Like it's going out of style. And again, my three teenagers think those things are both very uncool, but uh, yeah, I love, I love doing those things. So that's probably the most common thing. I'm the biggest wimp. My husband does the whole cold shower thing, like the Wim Hof breathing stuff. And I was like, you should do it too. I'm like, no, I'm the hot tub girl. <laughs> I do like that too. But yeah, I, there's just something about our amazing mountain lake, especially if you have to horseback ride in or, you know, hike in and they're pretty remote and just getting to experience them. And I don't know, it's my favorite thing. So that's a pretty Colorado thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what, will you tell me a bit real quick about what you see the future of education in Colorado? Is there anything big trend you're seeing or something that parents should know more about? Yeah, I mean, I think that again, you know, the idea that education and industry should be linked to arm in arm, I think is something that's not going to go away. And even though it's been something we've been talking about for a while, I see a huge uptick in the ways that organizations are coming together to figure it out. Um, and I think that that career connected learning or work-based learning or whatever you want to call it is, is really going to be the future in terms of really having ways that are meaningful intersections for the for the students to interact with the industry. And um, I think technology, of course, will play a role in that. And I think that other, you know, maybe some micro trends will come and go, but I really think that will be here to stay. I think that talent development piece is gonna be big. And I always say, if Colorado can't figure it out, then no one can, because we have this, you know, perfect ingredients, right? We have these highly supportive industries. We have amazing community partners and nonprofits. and we, as you said earlier, we have this kind of can-do attitude. So I think Colorado will be a leader in this, but that's definitely, I think, a huge trend that's going to stick around. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think, you know, we import a lot of our talent and I don't, we don't need to. We've got amazing we don't. people here that are learning, want to learn, want to get involved in industry. So we've got a little ways to go to figure that out, but I'm so glad that you're working on it and MindSpark's working on it. And um, I'm just uh, really appreciative of all you do for the community. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Heidi. I appreciate that so much. Well, go out and have a beautiful Colorado day. It's sunny <laughs> yes. right now and not rain. It's been, a, there's been a lot of rain lately, but that's yes. good for us. It is. It is. It is. Well, I appreciate it so much. And thank you for time. And thank you for all you do too. It's amazing. Thank you for joining us today on Heidi's Colorful Colorado. If you enjoyed this conversation, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And definitely follow me on Instagram to keep up with my latest adventures. 
In the meantime, happy trails from me, Heidi Ganahl.